Hi, my name is Kevin Rooker. I'm a clinical marketing specialist here at Sipco Medical Solutions. And today, I'm going to show you how to assemble and use your MicroTouch Stabilizer and Classic Stepper. So the first thing we're going to want to do is assemble the transportation stand. As you unpack, you should have four components to the transportation stand. There's the pole that has the threaded stud on the end, the rolling base, what we call a locating washer, and a locking knob. So with the rolling base inverted or upside down, place it over the end of the pole so that the threading stud is sticking out of the bottom. Then using the locating washer, you'll see it has a tapered portion. Put that inside the rolling stand and then using the locking knob to tighten it down. And that's all there is to it. Your transportation stand is now assembled. Now we'll demonstrate the MicroTouch dual-sided table mount. First, we'll want to remove from the transportation stand the actual part that will mount onto your table. I'm going to set it up here to show you that these areas are what will slip onto the rails on the side of your bed. Once you've slid it onto the table rails, I'm just going to show you real quickly, you'll want to tighten it down to the rails using this. This knob will allow it to move farther away or closer to the table. We recommend that you push it as close to the table as possible. Next, we're going to attach the MicroTouch stabilizer onto the table mount. So I have it on the transportation stand. I'll remove it from there. I've loosened this knob to allow this plate to fit down into this plate. Now I'm tightening the knob here, and then my MicroTouch stabilizer is attached to the table and ready to use. Next I'm going to demonstrate how to assemble the MicroTouch LP. There are a few differences between the MicroTouch stabilizer and the MicroTouch LP stabilizer. The LP by the way just stands for low profile. First is the mounting. The MicroTouch LP mounts on one side of your table or the other. It can actually be configured whichever way you desire. So we'll remove the mounting piece from the transportation stand and you'll notice there's a place to go onto the rail. And then we'll tighten it down with these knobs here on the side. Make sure they're tight, make sure that's stable. Next we're going to loosen the quick connect knob. Then I'm going to roll the LP over while it's still on the transportation stand. It's fairly heavy so this sometimes makes it a little bit easier instead of walking clear across the room with it. And then I'm going to put the dovetail on the LP onto the mounting plate. And then I'll tighten the knob, and it's assembled. Before we're done, I just wanted to point out some of the differences in the LP and the MicroTouch. This knob corresponds to the vertical movement of the stabilizer. This Y knob is actually underneath if you're using the dual rail mounted system. Now that we've attached the stabilizer to the table, the next step is to attach your classic stepper onto the MicroTouch stabilizer. You'll notice a triangular shaped plate on the bottom of the stepper and also a triangular shaped plate on the top of the stabilizer. We want to slide one into the other and then using this knob we'll tighten it down. Next we're going to use the control knob, the tightening control knob. Before you do that, be sure you have a hold of the stabilizer. Once you loosen this knob, this entire stabilizer becomes a free-floating unit. So you need to be sure you have a hold of it before you loosen that. Counterclockwise motion will loosen it. And now this is a free-floating setup. And I can set this wherever I want it, right outside the patient. Then I tighten that control knob again with the number one and I'm ready to begin my procedure. 
One of the more unique features of the MicroTouch stabilizer is the ability to move in six different planes or six degrees of freedom as we like to call it. I think it will be easier for me to demonstrate those to you with the stepper than it would be to show you with the fine adjustment mechanism. So we have the X axis which will move the stepper left and right. We have the Y axis which will move the stepper up and down vertically. We have the Z axis which will move the stepper forward and backward. Then we also have what we call pitch, yaw, and roll. So the ZR adjustment adjusts the pitch, which will angle it up and down. The YR adjustment adjusts the yaw, which rolls kind of side to side. And the XR adjustment adjusts the roll, which goes this way and that way. Besides the six degrees of freedom, there are a couple of other controls or motions I want you to be aware of as well. The cradle that the probe fits into can rotate this way or this way, and you'll notice there are some degree markers on there to give you an idea of how much of a rotation that you're actually putting onto the probe. And then also these knobs that sit on the side of the stepper are what actually help you step the probe into or out of the patient. Each notch, each step is a five millimeter change. Next we'll place the endocavity balloon onto the probe itself. So we'll take the balloon out of its case and it's important to note that the endocavity balloon its main purpose is to position the prostate. Now with the fluid around the prostate during imaging, that may in fact improve the image, but the number one reason for using the endocavity balloon is to be able to position the prostate properly there on the ultrasound screen. So what we'll want to do is put a small amount of gel right here on the end of the probe, and then the balloon has a stiff part and kind of a loosened part. We want that loosened or smoother part where the probe elements are. Slide the probe cover all the way down, making sure that the non-stiff part is where the transducer elements are. Then we'll hook this onto a 20 or 30 cc syringe full of fluid. And I like to fill it this way because what we're trying to do is get all of the air out of the balloon. So if we fill it this way, then the air will come to the top, and sometimes we may even need to tap it a couple of times. Then we'll pull the fluid back out, with it coming all the air, and we may need to do that two or three times to get all the air removed out of the cover. Our next step is going to be to put the probe into the cradle. So at this point, it's important to understand that this cradle is unique to your particular probe. So at this point, you'll also probably want to talk to or consult your manufacturer's IFU for any specific directions on how to put your probe into the classic stepper cradle. The first thing we'll need to do is rotate the cradle about 40 degrees or so to loosen this knob. Then we can place it back in its neutral position, place the probe into the cradle, and again, each probe has a unique locking mechanism, etc., so you'll need to consult your particular manufacturer on the specifics for that. I'm going to rotate that cradle again, and then we'll tighten this knob into place, and now the probe is secure. 
Next, I'll show you how to drape your classic stepper and your microtouch stabilizer. It's important to note at this point that in a real procedure, you would be sterile. This setup at this point forward would be sterile. The person opening the drape and the grid would not be sterile, but they can be dropped onto a sterile tray. So for the purposes of the demonstration today, we will not be sterile. So first we're going to open the drape itself and you'll notice it's labeled top. So I'll want to keep that part up and towards the top of the stepper and stabilizer. You'll also notice some yellow dots and an arrow. The arrow points towards the patient. The yellow dots just in front of them, just this direction, are a couple of little X's that'll show us where to put the grid posts through. So I'll continue to open it up. Drape it over the system. And again, the red arrow points towards the patient and I'll position the small X's right over the holes for the grid. Next, I'll open the grid. At this point, you'll notice there's two sides to the grid. One goes from A to M, and one goes from A to G. It's important to consult our IFU, our instructions for use, as to which side of the grid you should be using for your particular probe. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use the A to M side. And again, I'm going to position these right over the X's. And then the grid's in place. To tighten it, I'll need to tighten these two screws. You can do that either reaching underneath if you're non-sterile or from the outside if you're sterile. Important to use the tape strips located on the front side, patient side, if you will, of the drape so that it keeps the front side of the stabilizer protected during the procedure. Now that the drape and the grid are properly placed, I'm going to manipulate the stabilizer and the stepper into its final position to begin the exam. For today's demonstration, I'm going to reach underneath, loosen that number one knob. Now I'm going to position the stepper right outside of the patient's rectum. Tighten it down there again. And then the final step, using these two knobs back here, I'm going to loosen the grid so I can push the grid right up against the patient's perineum. Any further advancement or adjustment of the probe at this point, we'll be done with the fine adjustment mechanism. Now that the exam's completed, we need to remove the drape and the grid. They're both disposable, single-use items. So again, I'm going to reach underneath the drape, hold on to that stabilizer, loosen that number one knob, bring it away from the patient. Then I will loosen the screws on the side of the grid so that it will remove easily. And then just by reaching underneath, grasping the grid, pulling it away from the probe, dispose of this properly. And then I'll need to take the probe out of the cradle to send it off for reprocessing. Of course, I would be wearing gloves at this point. I want to remove the drape throw it away properly, and remember to clean the probe prior to sending it off for high-level disinfection. And remember to consult your particular manufacturer's IFU on proper high-level disinfection of their probe. You may need to remove your cradle from the classic stepper for reprocessing. To do that, simply roll it like we were before, but this time we're going to continue to roll it until it comes all the way off of the stepper, then you can clean it. When you're ready to put it back, there are channels or grooves here, there are some tabs here. We want to turn this almost upside down, line those up, and then it comes right back into place. And now you're ready to reuse it. Thank you for watching. Should you have any additional questions, please feel free to contact us using the information you see on the screen.